In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Luke chapter fourteen twenty five to 33 says, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to meet him who comes against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. And glory be to God forever. I mean, the expression, deny himself, carry his cross, and follow me, are found in many places. Luke chapter 9, Matthew 10, Matthew 16, and Mark 6. This expression, Christ said it frequently. Today, we want to understand or review the part about carrying the cross. We saw that the cross was very important to Christ as he planned to be crucified to offer us the whole of love. Notice that in the journey to the cross, our Lord, glory to him, chose and included an event in his plan where he falls under the weight of the cross while, he, while, while on his way to Golgotha. When they realized that he will not reach Golgotha, they compelled one who was passing by, the farmer Simon of Cyrene, to carry his cross. It's as if Jesus wanted to give us a practical example of distributing the burden of carrying the cross between him and another person. Christ wants to say, be like this, this man of, of Cyrene. I am the one who will be crucified and humiliated, but you carry the cross with me. The cross is your punishment, not my punishment. At least carry it with me and until I reach Golgotha, and the rest is on me. Christ was tired to death after 40 blows, which some people die from. He was standing for nine hours during the trial, in addition to slapping and spitting. He was in very poor health because he did not sleep in Gethsemane, in addition to being hungry and thirsty. He could not carry this tree, which was the wood of the cross, up to the mountain. So from this point, they compelled Simon to carry it. Our Lord wanted the idea of carrying the cross to be before all people. Instead of saying, carry my cross, he said, carry his cross, as in Luke 9.23. Okay, well, whose cross is it? You are he who is crucified. No, he says. In fact, it is your cross, not my cross. I'm bearing it instead of you. But you are the one who should have been crucified in the first place. You are the one who should have been abused. I took your place in this wicked scheme. So all that remains is for you to just carry the cross. I won't tell you to be crucified with all its hardships. That's beyond you. Man cannot bear this. As we see when God said to our father Abraham, You cannot kill your son. You're not up to it. But it is enough that you carry the knife. If you are ready to carry the cross, you can enter heaven and rejoice in our Lord. Carrying the cross is the basis of Christianity. As Christians, what determines who enters heaven and who will not is that one carried his cross and the other refused to carry his cross. At the same time, the degree to which a person is serious in carrying the cross, so is the degree of his honor before our Lord. The degree of your zeal for carrying the cross, so is the degree of the grace you'll find in God's eyes. Do you love the cross? Do you carry your cross joyfully? Or do you carry it grudgingly, unwillingly? From a practical standpoint, I will tell of four crosses that we have to carry.